Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Educational Lady Podcast and a special Tech Tuesday segment. We'll be right back with uh, today's special guests. But first, as always, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Now, don't hit that fast forward button. These are all companies that I used as an AD or I've got a personal professional connection to, and I'm recommending them highly to you. So take three minutes, listen to our shout outs, then listen to our segment, and then go visit these sponsors. I'm telling you, you're going to be glad you did. Here we go. We want to say thanks to Huddle for their support of the podcast. Go to huddle.com, change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I wanted a platform that was going to work for all of our coaches, and Huddle came through like a champ. Our coaches, our athletes, even our fans and parents loved all the tools that Huddle provided that let our kids experience sports at the highest level. Go to Huddle.com, join the 8 million users, and turn your school into a Huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo to see their score tables and their scoreboards in action. Their products not only generate income for your athletic department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We want to thank Gipper for their support. Go to gipper.com, start creating world-class content to promote your athletes and celebrate your teams. Gipper's used and trusted by over 4,000 high school and college programs. It's professional graphic design made easy. That's gipper.com. We'd also like to thank Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. It's digital ticketing that offers more. We'd like to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school record boards for all the sports, for all the teams, or your school's Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen, that's right, touchscreen video consoles. It's also a great way to tell your school's unique history and share your proudest moments. The website is vitalsignswalloffame.com. Make sure you visit them today. We want to say thanks to Home Campus. Home Campus is a platform that you're going to use every single day. Things like scheduling, um, student athlete eligibility and clearance. Who doesn't do that every day? Uploading rosters, communicating with everyone in your uh, network. Home Campus is going to do it better, going to do it faster, and it's going to give you a lot of time back in your schedule. To get started, all you have to do is go to homecampus.com. That's homecampus.com. We'd like to thank Ohio University's online Master of Science in Athletic Administration. This affordable 20-month online master's program focuses exclusively on interscholastic athletic administration. And when you finish, you're not only going to have your master's degree, you're going to have 11 NIAAA leadership training courses to go toward your RAA or your CAA. You're also going to be part of a nationwide network with connections in athletics across the country. To get started, Go to ohio.edu slash info slash MAA. You're going to be glad you did. We also want to say thanks to Snap Raise. Have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraiser and gotten little, if any, return on investment? Stop right here. Go to snapraise.com. Hands down, the best online fundraiser out there. We used it at our school because it works. Go to snapraise.com. Check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. Go to snapraise.com. And we'd like to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents, your coaches, your student athletes, you're really missing out. Athletic Surveys is going to connect you. They'll connect you to people you're probably already hearing from, the gripers and complainers. But that's only a small percentage of your stakeholders. Athletic Surveys is going to connect you to the other 98% that supports your program. And that information is tremendously valuable when you're talking with a frustrated parent or your principal or maybe even your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey that lets you take your athletic program from good to great. Athleticsurveys.com. 
Hey, welcome everybody to uh, what I'm going to call a very special uh, episode of the Educational Day uh, AT podcast. We've got two great guests today. Uh, one of them uh, has been on before, and if you're familiar with the world of educational athletics, you know the name Gary Stevens. Uh, Gary's a certified master athletic administrator, and he's the director of athletics. I might say longtime director of athletics at Thornton Academy uh, up in the great state of Maine. Very active at the state and the national level. And as I mentioned, uh, he was on our very first season of the educational AD. Uh, he's joined today by the co-author of a book that they have uh, uh, just published now. It's out. We're going to talk about that book today. Uh, Gary, I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce our other guest. Thank you very much, Jake. And it's great to be back uh, with you uh, on this podcast. Uh, joining us today uh, is Dave Ede, who uh, works for WGME Television in Portland, Maine. And I'll let uh, Dave introduce himself to uh, the athletic directors around the country who will be watching this podcast. Oh, thank you, Gary. And thank you, Jake, for, for having us today. Um, I've been uh, in Portland, Maine for the past uh, 30 plus years, uh, have been the sports director at WGME TV uh, for 29 of those years, and have worked with uh, great athletic directors like Gary uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, educationally, I uh, studied at uh, Curry College, received a bachelor's there at, uh, uh, in communications, and then went on to get a master's degree at Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, grew up a diehard New England sports fan. Um, I found throughout the years, though, my love and passion has been Maine high school sports uh, for a very long time. So really excited to be on the show today. Well, thanks again for joining. And for our listeners, uh, the name of the book that we're going to uh, Dave and Gary are going to be sharing today uh, is called Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. It's a great book. It's available on Amazon and any place else you can find a book. I strongly encourage you to go out and get your copy. Uh, Gary, real quickly, for somebody that's new to our podcast, just give them a quick uh, uh, background uh, or uh, a quick idea of your uh, extensive background in athletic administration. Well, Jake, I'm actually serving in my 41st year in uh, education. I've worked at the secondary level for, for pretty much all of it. Um, I was a high school history teacher, coached multiple sports. And then in 1996, I found myself uh, uh, being assigned to be the director of student activities at uh, Bon Eagle High School, which is in the town of Standish, Maine, where I live. I served in that role for 11 years. And then uh, in 2007, I came over to my current position at Thornton Academy. So I've worked uh, in uh, high school athletics as a teacher or a coach uh, or a director for 42 years, counting my senior year in college, but I've been an AD for 28. Uh, and as you said, I've had the honor of serving on the uh, a National uh, Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Board of Directors for three years, representing Section 1, and uh, also the, currently ex the Assistant Executive Director of the main IAAA. Mm -hmm. And uh, listeners, if you want a deeper dive into all things Gary Stevens, go back into our library and listen to that episode. Some really good best practices uh, for any athletic director in that episode. Um, Dave, real quick, and again, for our listeners, we're going to take a deep dive into some selected chapters of the book. But um, I think many of us in athletic administration, I actually retired after COVID. I'd put in my 41. But uh, um I think we 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 hear COVID and we just go, oh, my goodness, you know, we're so glad that's over. Um, I'm going to be Captain Obvious here. Why write a book about the COVID experience? Uh, you know, Jake, I think some of the stories were so surreal um, that we, you know, Gary and I had talked throughout the, the, the whole pandemic. Um, Gary was, by the way, my lifeline, you know, as far as putting everything into English as far as what, what was going on in, in the world of sports here in Maine. Um, but I, some of the stories of resiliency, uh, survival that we found along the way, I thought needed to be told. Um, and then the, the, the sheer pain of watching your own kids. Uh, Gary mentioned my daughter 
uh, but my son was uh, supposed to be a freshman collegiate hockey player, had the entire season wiped out. So there were, you know, there were stories like that along the way. And I just thought, you know, that those stories needed to be told and uh, and to look back, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now and say, wow, we actually made it through the dark days. Yeah, absolutely. And we were talking about that before we started recording. Um, again, for our listeners, the book is called Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, Gary was nice enough to let me uh, choose the the chapters that were that you are going to be sharing. And it was tough because uh, as I'm looking at each uh, chapter, I'm just, oh, wow, this is important or this would be a great story. But uh, we picked out four. Uh, Dave and Gary are both going to share their thoughts on uh, two each. But we encourage you to go out and get the book, Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Let's go and take our first break. But we're coming back with more. So please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to our good friends at Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years. But when I became an athletic director, I wanted a platform that was going to work for all of our teams. And Huddle came through like a champ. Our coaches, our athletes, even our parents just loved the tools that Huddle provided that let our kids experience sports at the highest level. Go to Huddle.com. See why we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 8 million users and turn your school into a Huddle school. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive indoor score tables and video boards. Go to SidelineInteractive.com and schedule a live web demo see their score tables and their score boards in action. Their products not only generate income for your athletic department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational AD Podcast. Once again, our guests are Dave E., the sports director at WGME-TV in Maine, and Gary Stevens, certified master athletic administrator and longtime AD at Thornton Academy up in Maine. They are the co-authors of Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Gary, we're going to kick off uh, with you. And uh, Chapter 4, the, the title was Last Team Standing, Canceling the Sweet 16 Basketball Tournament. Share with our listeners, how did this, you know, happen? And, uh, you know, give us your firsthand perspective. Thank you again, Jake. Um, the The Bookstone Seasons is a compilation of um, really the two-year period from March 2020 to March 2022 in all levels of sport in Maine. The high school level, which we'll be talking about a little bit more, uh, our professional teams here in the greater Portland area, and then our, our colleges. Maine only has one Division One college the university of maine at orno but we have a, a number of division three colleges that are, have been very dominant in some of their sports bowden college in brunswick maine one of the oldest colleges in the country has been a powerhouse uh in women's basketball for many years and in march of 2020 uh that week when the world changed for all of us in the united states they were scheduled to host the sweet 16 with a berth for the final four on the line bowden had a, a loaded team. They were returning uh, the player of the year, Maddie Hassan in Division Three. They had been in the last two national championship games. And they felt this was their year. It was also a unique setting in that uh, Bowden was hosting three other schools from other parts of the country, which is not always that common in the Sweet 16 level. Trine University out of Angola, Indiana, Oglethorpe University out of Atlanta, and um, uh, Whitten College out of Walla Walla, Washington. And uh, the previous weekend, there were some hints that uh, uh, this the upcoming Sweet 16 might be in jeopardy. Uh, Amherst College uh, in New England had allowed no fans at its opening round games, but the NCAA proceeded with uh, things as scheduled, and these four schools converge on Brunswick, Maine. The chapter really talks about their journey from where they started in their four corners of the United States and how they got to Brunswick, Maine, some of the challenges they faced, some of which were uh, COVID-related, 
And then what happened to them for the two days that they were there, where they went from all hoping to get to that that ultimate goal of being in the final four and competing for a national championship to literally at 3.44 p.m. on March 12th, having those dreams dashed. We've interviewed uh, all the coaches. We interviewed at least uh, four to five players who were there in Brunswick at the time. We have their story. We have their journey. We know what they were doing. We know what they're thinking uh, when that moment happened. And the chapter is uh, really a tribute to them and and having to deal with the the ultimate disappointment during a historic week in our country's history. Yeah, and uh, the response to COVID, you know, as you mentioned, when the world changed, um, you know, every state high school association, I think, and, and colleges, you know, they had a different response. It wasn't all uh, the same. You mentioned having interviewed the players and the coaches, uh, and I'm going to guess the responses ranged from, you know, outrage and anger to, you know, okay, I get it, I understand. What's maybe one or two of those stories that really resonated with you and still resonates three years later? Well, I, I, I said to the people from those four schools, uh, the students of Bowdoin, Trine, Whitman, and Oglethorpe will have a place in my heart forever. I, I, th their stories impacted me, and they still do. Uh, one of my favorite uh, interviews was with uh, Maddie Burdett. In fact, Maddie and I have been sharing some uh, some messages this week. Uh, she's had a chance to get her book and read it, and she was moved uh, by the fact that somebody would even tell her a story. Maddie uh, was a senior at uh, Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington. Whitman College, ironically, which we share in the book, has a connection to the original outbreak in the United States is that a former captain of the Whitman basketball team coached by Michelle Ferenz was the uh, lead charge nurse at the Evergreen facility in Seattle, where the initial uh, patients were in the United States. So Whitman is very much tied into this. And obviously where Washington state was where, uh, where the first uh, individual with COVID came to the U S but Maddie Burdett and her team are, are they go to Wartburg college in Iowa they survived their first round. They're without their best player who has had a concussion, uh, but they get to move on to, to Maine. They return to Washington State, do the laundry, go to some classes, and get ready for an, a cross-country journey. Basically, the morning that they are going to head to, to Maine, Maddie comes down with an ailment. She's sick. She doesn't know what it is, and she can't travel with her team, and she is one of the two best players in her team. Literally, she actually, later in the week, she gets better and she travels to Maine with the team. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing is she learns about what has been, what's going on with the NCAA's decision to um, uh, uh, cancel the tournament when she is landing at Logan Airport in Boston. She looks at her text and sees some, sorry about your season. She thought they were talking about the men's team. Um, and uh learns the word that the NCAA has canceled her tournament. She goes to a, a waiting area in Logan. She breaks down um, and uh, eventually gets reunited with her team in Brunswick. Just the emotion that she went through in telling her story and, uh, you know, and the idea that she had this mysterious illness, they even asked you, you think it was COVID? What, what do you, what do you know? Uh, and, and, and we don't know, but I think her story and uh, just her effort to get to that sweet 16 and then having those dreams dashed is emblematic of, of everybody. I thought it's sort of interesting that, interesting that her high school uh, was located within just a mile or two of Interstate 90, which goes across the country. Starts at Washington State in the West. Where does it empty into? Logan Airport in Boston. And literally her basketball life begins on one end of I-90, and it ends suddenly and sadly on the other end of I-90. And she has no teammates around her for support. Uh, that is one of the, I think, really, one of the really sad stories of COVID. And I think one we can all, uh, the human side of us can all connect with of what that young lady was going through, uh, which a lot of young people were going through when they learned their seasons were suddenly over. Right. I, again, it, it's still just, as you listen to the story, it just kind of breaks your heart because you feel for those kids and those coaches and the families, uh, you know, of those players. Um, you know, it, it's been a couple of years now. Uh, have you heard from or corresponded with any of those individuals you had a chance to interview with? You know, is there uh, is there a happy ending to a story that you can share with us? 
Well, I've had a chance to learn from many of them um, after this incident. I, in fact, to be truthful, our our uh, journey in writing this book began in 2022. So when I interviewed them, they were already two years removed from that experience. Uh, we weren't talking to people who were who you know were speaking from raw nerves. Uh, in fact, the the anniversary of Dave's and my getting together for our fir first meeting to do the book is today. It's a two year anniversary. But in speaking to them back in 22, 22 uh, many of them have gone on to professional careers. Um, uh, Maddie herself, she is now, uh, I believe, in, lives in Arizona. She's in the business world. She uh, has a great sense of humor. She has a she's a, one of those peppy type individuals that uh, you love to have as a teammate. Uh, she seems to be doing well. Um, Katie Steers, who was uh, the the she was the the engine for the Trine team in Angola, Indiana. Uh, she was the, the team mom, if you will. She was the only senior on that team. She was devastated by the experience. I think she's still feeling the devastation, but where, where did she go to work? She went to work for Pfizer, which was the first company to produce the vaccine. So I think that's an interesting connection between that chapter and the pandemic a, as a whole. Maddie Hassan, who was the star from Bowdoin, whom I, and Dave knows her mom as well. Her mom is a very, very, uh, respected, uh, successful girls basketball coach in my conference here in Southern Maine. Uh, Maddie, I think was disappointed because she saw this was our year, but she's what she said to me. And we quoted in the book is, uh, despite my disappointment, I, I cannot say enough how important it was for us to, to, to cherish the memories of the time I had with that team. We had three wonderful months, and for that, I'll always be grateful. So she has found a way to to move on from that. But you wonder how many folks really have, uh, and and maybe it'll be years from now when they really come to terms with uh, the loss of that experience. Yeah, uh, and as we've said, I think it's important to to look back so we can continue to move forward. And uh, this has been said many times: was or is there? Uh, uh, a better equipped profession than the high school athletic director or college AD to handle and work through all the challenges that uh, COVID presented. Uh, thanks so much for sharing that. Again, for our listeners, uh, our guests today are Gary Stevens and Dave Ede, the co-authors of Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to hear from the other uh, member of the authorship team, David, and he's going to share uh, an experience of those COVID years. So let's take that break, but we are coming back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We'd like to thank Gipper for their support of the podcast. Go to gipper.com. You're going to start to create world-class marketing content in seconds that's going to help you promote your athletes and celebrate your teams. Gipper is used and trusted by over 4,000 high school and college athletic programs across the country. It's professional graphic design made easy. How easy? Hey, it's so easy, even I can do it. Go to gipper.com to get started. We'd also like to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support. Go to hometownticketing.com. It's digital ticketing that offers more. The hometown team is going to help you set up and sell tickets online, not just for your athletic events, but for things like school plays, concerts, school dances, even graduation. And here's the best part. Every school gets assigned a dedicated client success manager that's going to provide you hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com for more information. It's digital ticketing that offers more. Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational AD Podcast. Uh, one more time, our guests are co-authors of Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Next up is Dave Ede. He's the sports anchor, sports director for WGME-TV in Maine. Uh, Dave um, from the broadcaster uh, perspective, and again, you, we've mentioned that you, your station does a great job of covering, you know, high school sports. Um, what was that like for you uh, from your perspective uh, as COVID was, uh, you know, wreaking havoc with uh, everything in Maine? Well, Jake, again, thanks so much for having us uh, today. It's, it's really an honor to be on your podcast. 
Um, I remember back, it was a few days before St. Patrick's Day when I was told to, you know, head back home uh, with a, an app on my phone to be able to broadcast the sports from my living room, which is right behind me. It was a surreal time because I, I'm not a very uh, computer savvy guy, uh, um, but we we were starting to separate the crews. Um, people were starting to be dispersed to, you know, to their homes. And uh, I set up shop there. Um, we had had, uh, and then by the time, you know, things got rolling in March of 2020, everything started closing down. It was a domino effect. Um, not just teams, but leagues just getting shut down um, throughout the state, um, you know, the NESCAC. And it just, it was, uh, no one really knew what was going on other than that there was this virus that was, that was wreaking havoc throughout the country and, of course, our state as well. Um, I remember that summer, uh, and, and Gary, uh, we, we were on Zoom calls with, with athletic directors and the main principals association, and was there going to be a season in the fall? What, you know, what was going to happen? And um, at one point in August, um, I believe it was August, it looked like we were going to have a full full seasons. A um, couple of days later, everything changed. Things got shut down for the fall, but we finally returned to some sort of, I guess, on the road back to normalcy in 2021 when um, when uh, the winter sports started to um, get back into action. Uh, the kids were wearing masks. I believe they were even wearing masks on the um, hockey arena as well. Uh, to start. Uh, again, this was just um, an incredible time. Uh, Cooper Flagg, who I, I'm sure the the viewers and listeners know that name. Um, he was the most decorated high school basketball player maybe of all time in our state. He was a freshman at Nokomis High School in Newport, Maine. Nokomis uh, was you know, ripping through uh, the tournament. Um, now they're playing in the largest venue in Maine, the uh, Cross Insurance Arena for the uh, Class A State Championship. And these kids were coming out with their masks, you know, half on, half off, uh, but they were playing and there wasn't an, I mean, uh, I, I, it was just, everyone was so enamored to see Cooper flag for that one, because they knew he was he was gone after that, and he, he had eventually gone to Mount Verde Academy down in Florida, and now he's uh, heading to Duke. Um, but that was a it was a it was a it, we were starting to find our way through those dark days. Uh, but the kids were you know were masked up once they finally got back to playing the sports that they love. But it was um, it was certainly um, uh, uh, really a bizarre time uh, that Gary and I and the officials and the coaches and the players will never forget. Yeah, and the variety of responses. I, I know here in Florida, you know, um, we had probably every imaginable response and non-response from no competition to wide open competition to athletes wearing masks during competition and officials, you know, wearing masks or not wearing masks. Uh, as a basketball official, I know uh, one of the companies came out with a mask that actually had an extra little, uh, looked like an extra nose piece, but it's for your whistle. Uh, so uh, again, I, I just uh, appreciate you guys documenting that and, and sharing it with the readers. Now, you also have a, a different or an additional perspective as a parent. Uh, you know, I know that you had a, a son that was a college hockey player and your daughter was involved in basketball you know, from the parent perspective, you know, looking back, you know, what, uh, what were the reactions? What were the, uh, um, you know, how did you, uh, I'm going to say deal with, uh, COVID as a parent, as a parent, it was really hard. My son, uh, couldn't tour any schools. Uh, he had coaches that were, that were interested in having him come out and visit the schools. Everything got shut down. Um, he eventually ended up going to Worcester State University and ironically will be playing his COVID year next fall. 
So that extra year that was given. Um, my daughter, Danielle, was captain of her um, uh, team, Kent's Hill, uh, in, in Maine. And uh, they, as Gary uh, talked about, they didn't play a single game that year. But there, Jake, there was a group of athletic directors in central Maine that put this makeshift basketball tournament together for teams that, that didn't play at all, you know, uh, throughout the season. Um, so Kent Hill was in this tournament. Um, there were no fans at the game. Uh, there were, um, Kent Hill was a, the bottom seed. So they had one game against the top seed. And the one thing I remember most about that time, a couple things, there were cardboard cutouts for fans. No one was allowed in the, in the gymnasiums. So what we did was we sent a picture to the athletic directors and the coaches of our kids and uh, they, you know, they made these cardboard, almost like these fat heads, but the, the right. cardboard cutouts. But the thing I remember most was that my wife at the time was um, dealing with a, a, a horrible bout of lung cancer. Um, she was she was towards the end of her time. And um, we actually got to see the game on uh, the, the TV. It was live streamed. And uh, Danielle, the, her team was down 25 points at the end. And she ended up hitting a three-pointer at the buzzer. And it made no difference in the score. But the the silver lining for us was that was Lisa's last memory of her daughter playing basketball. So it was tough. But it was, again, it was... Um, it was some for us. It, we always tried to look at the positives, even in the pandemic, and that was one positive moment that we were at least able to see that, even though that we weren't there at that time. Uh, and there were there were you know we, we received so many emails from parents and um, that just wanted their kids to get out there and play. Right. And I think I think that was so important to get them back sooner rather than later. Uh, despite the virus still being present. Um, it was just a, a, a very surreal time. Right. And, and we heard that nationwide, you know, that, that mantra, let them play. Uh, so you mentioned your son's in college now. Uh, how about your daughter? You know, uh, what is she doing these days? Well, she's three miles away. She's at Holy Cross College in Worcester. She's studying organic chemistry and uh, no longer plays basketball. And, and Drew is at Worcester State University uh, majoring in criminal justice. And again, he's on the men's hockey team and um, is really excited for his extra year, which is due to the pandemic. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. That's great. Great stuff. Thanks so much for sharing. And uh, from that personal perspective as well. We're going to go and take another quick break, but our guests are Dave Ede and Gary Stevens, the co-authors of Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. We're going to come back. Gary and uh, Dave are each going to share another uh, insight into a chapter in the book that we want you to go out and get. And we'll talk about that uh, before we sign off. But let's take that break. We're coming back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. That's Kobe Bryant. Hey, we want to say thanks to Vital Signs Wall of Fame for their support of the podcast. Go to their website, vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check out their interactive touchscreen. That's right, touchscreen video consoles. It's a great way to show off your school record boards for all the teams, for all the sports, or your school's Hall of Fame. It's also a great way to share your school's unique history and your proudest moments. The website is vitalsignswalloffame.com. Check it out today. You're going to be glad you did. We also want to thank Home Campus. Home Campus is a platform that you will use every single day. Things like scheduling, student-athlete eligibility and clearance. Who doesn't do that every day? Uploading rosters, communicating with everybody in your network. Home Campus is going to do it better, it's going to do it faster, and it's going to give you a lot of time back in your schedule. To get started, all you need to do is go to homecampus.com. That's it. Go to homecampus.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational AD Podcast. 
Gary Stevens, the athletic director at Thornton Academy up in Maine, is, is up next on our uh, special episode about Stolen Seasons, uh, a book that uh, Gary's the co-author of, How Maine Survived the COVID Pandemic. Gary, you're going to share uh, from uh, chapter, I got to get this right, uh, <laughs> chapter eight, uh, and the title really intrigued me, and I know I, I Googled it, I saw the uh, photo, uh, wear a mask and keep your six. So share with our listeners, you know, about that particular chapter. Thank you again, Jake. And uh, this chapter really ties very closely into what Dave just described in terms of that makeshift basketball tournament that some of my colleagues led by Joel Stoneton uh, of Winthrop High School put together in central Maine. Uh, one of the things I'm proudest of, of the, of the performance of, of my colleagues during the pandemic is that uh, from, whether it was in the northern part of the state on the Canadian border or on the Piscataqua River, uh, which borders New Hampshire, we had ADs all over the state trying to find creative ways to get the kids back out in the field, especially in those early months of COVID. Uh, we had guidelines in our state in order to try to prevent the spread of the virus. Uh, we, we remember the old term flattening the curve. And one of the, one of the things that was happening here in Maine was, the again, the, the mask wearing in public, but also the idea of the social distancing keeping six feet away from people. We all recall going to uh, supermarkets and seeing spots on the floor or being uh, asked to wait to go into a checkout line. Uh, and uh, even in our schools, we saw uh, tables with dots six feet apart to try to socially distance the kids. This chapter deals with the efforts of uh, a group of educators and kids at Sanford High School in Maine. Sanford's in the southern part of Maine in York County. Uh, it was a former textile community, which is it's been on tough times in recent years, but it was the scene of a pretty major outbreak of COVID-19 uh, in, in 2020. As we went back to school in the fall of 2020, Maine was designated by uh, county color codes. All of our 16 counties had a color code. If you were green, that meant you could have in-person learning and you could have athletics. If you were red, you had to stay totally at home. And if you were yellow, you could do some type of hybrid education, but no athletics. York County, where I am, and Sanford is in my league, we were in the yellow from Labor Day when athletics got underway through Columbus Day, uh, meaning we had no, no athletics while well, everybody else in the state was. The kids from Sanford High School were frustrated by this. And Brett Williams, who's the director of their Performing Arts Center, woke up on the morning of September 16th, 2020. And while he's shaving, he had an idea. He says, what if we put together a public service announcement where we have the student athletes speak out to our community? Uh, they had seen that people were not wearing uh, masks and, and people maybe not doing following the social distancing rules. And maybe if we make a plea to the community, uh, maybe there'll be some change in behavior. He called my colleague, Gordon Sauls, the athletic director, and they rallied within a few hours, all the team captains at their stadium, and they shot a public service announcement, which the, anybody watching this can, can go on to uh, YouTube and find it, wear a mask and keep your six, where the kids speak out to the community. It's magical. They use a drone to film it uh, from above where you get to see all the kids, and they're keeping their six in a circle around the school logo. It pans out to the community at large. It's a plea to the community. And... Um, the Brett Williams and Sarah Schnell, his director of the public access TV station at Sanford, uh, put together that video and released it that night. And it went viral in the state of Maine, went viral. And I don't know if it's a cause or effect, but within a few weeks, we had athletics in New York County. Uh, I know there are a lot of people I know, and Dave would have remembered that time as well. A lot of people listened to the kids when the kids spoke out. Um, you know, people people saw what they're saying, heard what they're saying. And I think it's the ingenuity of, of some an athletic director and a drama director together to put this together in less than a day. Boy, uh, and again, I can recall those uh, those early days where, you know, you had uh, distancing uh, practices in place. Sometimes they were followed. Sometimes they weren't. You know, so as an AD, you were scrambling. Um what was uh you, and you mentioned the the video which i just think is tremendous you know went viral um let's take a laser focus on you and your program at thornton just for a moment you know how did your population respond 
when distancing practices were being initiated, uh, you know, because I know in my school, we had every response you could imagine. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I've said this to other people I've talked to about that era, Jake, uh, and I have to be in full disclosure, I am not the first athletic director at Thornton Academy in its history to lead our athletics program through a pandemic. In 1918, Ralph Sanborn, who was the AD at the time, uh, was the athletic director athletic director at Thornton had a lot fewer sports than I did, but I know Thornton played a full seven game football schedule and a full complement of basketball games. And I don't know how Ralph did it. Uh, he didn't leave me any notes. He didn't leave me his playbook, uh, but he was able to do it somehow. And I found myself from the moment that we were shut down in March of 2020, when the whole world was shut down, basically uh, up through really the next two years, trying to build my own playbook. Uh, I, I was very fortunate. Uh, I mean, I, I surrounded myself with great leaders around the country. Uh, uh, Jay Hammis, a good friend of mine in Wisconsin, and I put together a, a series of 23 Zoom meetings where we invited people from around the country, brought in guests, um, and, and, and studied the issue and try to come up with some solutions. Uh, while we were waiting in that yellow period, I know our parents were anxious. I know our kids were anxious. They all wanted to play while everybody else in the state was playing. Uh, our biggest rival up the road, uh, eight miles Scarborough High School, on the same side of U.S. Route 1 as we are, eight miles up the road. They're in a different county. The county line is four miles uh, uh, between us. And uh, they could play. Our our kids couldn't. And it was frustrating. But I'll tell you, once we came back and had that opportunity, uh, you know, our coaches were committed to doing everything they could to follow the guidelines we were given to provide the opportunity. We did the screening every day and try to hold the kids accountable for that. We scrubbed soccer balls and, and uh, we, 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 we tried to social distance people as they were coming in. Um, we, we had to, we had outdoor gathering limits. We could only have so many people at an outdoor space. And I had to find creative ways on senior night to bring my senior parents in as I had to be ball girls and ball boys for a field hockey game. So they could watch their kid play her final game. So we, we stayed within the rules, but I, I found mostly people were really, really appreciative of the fact and they knew that we were trying i can honestly say this during the COVID era i only dealt with one fan who and it was not one of our own community members it was somebody from another community coming in for a a, a saturday morning uh sub varsity baseball game who wanted to make uh us enforcing our rules a political issue other than that People uh, were wonderful to deal with. I feel very fortunate. I know that it wasn't that way ever, everywhere in the country. No, uh, and uh, I know just what you're talking about. But I, I think the vast majority of, of parents and kids, you know, they they wanted to see the games. They understood, you know, hey, we got to do this, you know, whether they agreed with it, you know, as you said, politically or not. Uh, but, yeah, there's always going to be uh, some knuckleheads out there. We're going to do this uh, with Dave, but uh, Gary, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out, you know, pick your brain a little bit, you know, even just add you as a uh, part of their network and, and listeners, you got a tremendous resource here, as well as order the book, you know, can you help us out? Give us your contact information and where you would recommend they get their own copy of Stolen Seasons. Yes, uh, I can be reached at uh, Gary.Stevens, S-T-E-V-E-N-S, at ThorntonAcademy.org, T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N-A-C-A-D-E-M-Y, all one word, dot org. Um, uh, I think the best way for, for non-Maine residents to uh, obtain the book is to go to our website, StoneSeasons.com. You can learn more about the book. You can learn uh, more about Dave and me. You can read some of our testimonials, and there's a link to Tower Publishing out of Standish, Maine, who has been a wonderful partner for us to work with, where you can get the book ordered and delivered to you within a, a few days. If there are Maine residents watching the book, it is available in several Maine bookstores, Sherman's uh, uh, Books of Maine, as well as uh, None Such Books in South Portland, Maine. And uh, two of our famous iconic diners have gift shops, the Maine Diner in Wells, Maine, and Moody's Diner in Walderboro, are, are, uh, they have our books uh, as well. So uh, for again, for our non-Maine viewers, the, the website is probably your best way, stolenseasons.com. All right. We're coming back with another chapter. Uh, Dave Ead, uh, WGME TV uh, sports anchor, uh, is going to be sharing another perspective about the book, Stolen Seasons. So 
Uh, please stay with us. We're taking another commercial break. I know that's shocking to our regular listeners, but uh, we are coming back with more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We'd like to thank Ohio University's online Master of Science in Athletic Administration for their support. This affordable 20-month online master's program focuses exclusively on interscholastic athletic administration. And when you finish, you're not only going to have your master's degree, you're going to have 11 NIAAA leadership training courses that can go towards your RAA or your CAA. You're also going to be part of a nationwide network with connections in athletics across the country. To get started, all you need to do is go to Ohio dot edu slash info slash maa we'd also like to thank snap raise have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraiser and ended up with little if any return on investment stop right here go to snapraise.com hands down the best online fundraising platform out there we used it at our school because it works. Our coaches loved it. Our parents loved it. And you're going to love it too. Go to snapraise.com. You can check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. Go to snapraise.com. We also want to say thank you to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Uh, if you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your players, your coaches, uh, even your parents, you're really missing out. Athletic Surveys is going to connect you. They're going to connect you with a group you probably already hear from, the complainers, the gripers. But that's really only a small percentage of your stakeholders. Athletic Surveys will connect you to the other 98% that supports your program. And that's tremendously valuable information to have. When you're talking with a frustrated parent or maybe your principal or even your school board, go to athleticsurveys.com. They're going to create a custom survey that lets you take the pulse of everybody in your program. That's athleticsurveys.com. Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational AD Podcast. Once again, we're visiting today with the authors of Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, we're going to go back to Dave Ead, who's the sports anchor, sports director for WGME-TV in Maine. Dave, the, the final chapter that we're going to ask you to share uh, from this great book, it's called The Postscript, the final chapter. But I love the, the title, Seizing Back and Moving Forward. So um, looking back. Uh, you know, what sort of lessons uh, did we learn uh, from the COVID experience, at least your experience in Maine? Well, Jake, it's an old saying that we've all heard. You don't know what you got until it's gone. And in January of 2020, I was actually anchoring the news. I was filling in um, uh, because of the vacation schedules and that sort of thing. And the story emanated from uh, from uh, China about a virus that they were worried about at the time. And I had no idea how to even say uh, Wuhan uh, at that time. And I, I remember us talking about it. But two months later, it was a uh, it was a Hollywood horror movie that we were living through. And it wasn't two hours and you you, you leave the the theater. This was something we dealt with for a very long time. And it was uh, it was really hard. And I think um, as the pandemic wore on, I think the kids, I think the parents, uh, I think the coaches, I think we all learned valuable lessons. And there were so many of them. But one of the things that, that I mentioned from the outset was that uh, – you know, we had a really good thing taken away from us, and that was athletics, uh, going to a movie theater, going to a restaurant. Um, Gary had mentioned in, in the uh, the last segment about, you know, the six-foot distance, which was actually founded in the 1918 uh, pandemic, you know, to stay six feet apart. There were arrows on the in the grocery store what you know where to go up and down and and i remember you know i didn't i don't have we didn't have any pets but the arrow told me to go down the you know the pet food aisle 
So we just learned so much. Um, and again, there was no playbook, you know, for how, how to deal through, you know, with this. But from the athletes, from the parents, I think there was just a great appreciation of um, of finally getting a chance to play again. And the the hurdles that we all had to go through, the masks, you know, the distancing. Um, and, um, you know, a lot, and a lot of kids had those, you know, the thing about amateur athletics is you can't have another season if you're a senior. Or, and uh, Gary, had, you know, we, we talk about it all the time. There was a whole class of students he never got to see personally because of the masking at, at, at the time. I think the mental health piece in this whole pandemic, I think we're still seeing today, uh, unfortunately. I think a lot of kids had a really tough time with the socialization, uh, the Zooms, the the you know, the the computers, the there was no, you know, it was just a it was just a really strange time. People were isolated. Uh, people felt alone and uh, I, you know, and I think that um, um, we're, we're still coming out of this, even though the pandemic for the most part is over in our state, um, you know, COVID still is out there, different strains and we've learned to live with it. Um, but I think we're still dealing with uh, the residual effect from this I think catastrophe that we all lived through. Oh no, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, I'm still very active, uh, you know, in in the profession, uh, and talk to a lot of ads, a lot of coaches, and and they talk about the kids who, particularly the younger kids that might have been in middle school that missed out on those competitive opportunities in education based athletics, you know, because of COVID, and and we're seeing some uh, effects. I'll put it that way. Uh, in those students, um, you know, looking ahead, hey, uh, I, I'll again, I'll ask a captain obvious question. What did we learn and how can we apply that moving forward? Well, I think we, we learned patience uh, and we learned, I think, you know, <laughs> hopefully this never happens again. But I, I, I think God forbid if it did, I think we'd handle it a lot better. Because I think initially, when we didn't really understand what this virus was all about, we just heard, you know, that this was pretty bad. Um, I, I think we'll we'll be able to to get out of it a lot quicker. I think, you know, we again, we we were just going by the CDC and, and, you know, all the scientists and what they were telling us what we couldn't, couldn't do. And um, I think, you know, I, I can't speak for everyone. I just think that ultimately it, it wore on too long, at least in our state, um, the restrictions. Um, I remember um, in May of 2021, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the, indoor seating capacity uh, the limit uh, limitations was lifted right about and i remember being at hadlock field um that they could finally have a a, a you know a full stadium uh that's the sea dogs double uh, a affiliate um i was grateful that it was finally lifted because in july of that year uh, my wife passed away and there were a lot of people that wanted to pay their respects. And I remember thinking, what if there were still restrictions at that time? Only, you know, family members could have said goodbye to her. Um, so um, I think, you know, in a roundabout way, Jake, I think what we learned is we learned patience. But we also learned um, that, uh, you know, education is paramount learning, you know, rather than just, you know, being on the computer or being on TV and, the, you know, knowledge is power. And I, I think that um, hopefully we take some of the tools that we that we that we learned throughout this last pandemic. And, and like I said, hopefully we don't have to deal with it again. But if we do, I think we'll be better suited this time around. 
Oh, absolutely. Um, again, I think we learned about the value of face to face, you know, uh, and just opposed to, you know, as you yeah. said, being on the computer. Dave, um, you know, Gary has already mentioned this. You're a huge supporter, proponent of uh, high school sports and and other sports too. But if one of our listeners wanted to reach out and connect with you, pick your brain a little bit, or like I said, just add to uh, their network, what's the best way they can get a hold of you? Sure. You can uh, email me. Uh, I'll give you both my email addresses. My work one is D-E-I-D, that's D-E at sbgtv samboygeorgetv.com um or d l e i d at i'm sorry d l e i d 1133 at gmail.com um and then you know uh, stolenseasons.com it's it really is gary mentioned it's a it's a nice easy read website uh that tells you about our book uh has our testimonials in there we're so proud. Um, U.S. Senator Susan Collins is one of our uh, testimonials. Uh, Jeremy Swayman from the Boston Bruins, um, so the, who was there, the goalie at the University of Maine at the time of the uh, of the pandemic. So we certainly would love people to uh, to check out the website, and uh, hopefully they uh, they they become intrigued and uh, will uh, will want to order the book. Yeah. Again, uh, the name of the book is Stolen Seasons, and that's also the name of the website, StolenSeasons.com, where you can order it. Dave Eid and Gary Stevens, uh, thanks again for sharing the book and, and sharing your perspectives on uh, an important time in our uh, history. Gary, I'm going to throw it back to you for uh, some closing comments. Well, again, thank you, uh, Jake, on behalf of both Dave and me uh, for this opportunity to uh, talk with you uh, once again, but also to talk with uh, the listeners uh, who have an opportunity to access this podcast. Um, I just want to sort of follow up what Dave was just talking about. Um, the book itself is, uh, it, it, you can look at it a number of different ways. It's a chronology. It's a history. Um it has a lot of stories, uh, of amazing stories of what ordinary Mainers did under an extraordinary time and how they performed. I, I'm particularly proud, and we've tried to document as many examples as we can of some of my fellow athletic administrators here in Maine who did everything they could during that, that spring of 2020 when we had no sports to find ways to celebrate those seniors who uh, they would never see don their school uniforms again to finding avenues under sometimes really adverse circumstances to find a way to return to play and dealing with uh, everything from not just the COVID guidelines that we were given, but ones that were changing uh, on a, a weekly and sometimes a daily basis, but also dealing with your team is shut down for two weeks because of close contact with somebody else and, how you manage the communication and how you work with your community and try to keep their chins up. Uh, Stolen Seasons includes uh, a lot of examples, uh, including, as I said, four chapters at the high school level of what, what my colleagues did, and I'm very, very proud of them. The last sentence of the book, um, I think, summarizes what this is all about. And basically, Stolen Seasons is about this. This last sentence reads, in the in the end, Maine sports leaders stood tall so that sports in Maine could rise again. And uh, that's what our book is about. It's it's ordinary people doing extraordinary things for young people that wanted to have an opportunity to play. Well, uh, again, I appreciate the both of you coming on the podcast, uh, sharing your stories and perspective, and um, you know, just a, a, a great, great addition to the resources that are available to athletic directors uh, across the country. Uh, one more time, the book is Stolen Seasons, How Maine Survived the COVID-19 Pandemic. Co-authors Dave Ede and Gary Stevens. Gentlemen, thanks again for coming on and all the best uh, moving forward. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank you, Jake. For our listeners, we want to say thank you you for listening and just a reminder that we upload the zoom recordings of all of our uh podcasts to the educational lady podcast youtube channel we do this just about every day with interviews and special segments trying to share best practices thanks for listening 
We'll see you next time on the Educational 80 Podcast.